Hello and welcome back to our survival series. In the last episode, we were starting to place our objects into the world from our build menu. Now we're going to work on actually placing it and working out whether it's a valid location for that object. So it'll turn like red or green based upon what's happening. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can build these conditions into the game. So welcome back. Last time we were here, we were building our objects from our menu and we were trying to place them into our scene. But we want to do a condition check whether the item can be placed. Now, some items can be placed on the floor, some can only be placed on walls, some can be on both. And so all we have to do is come up with a way of our objects here to give us a condition whether or not it has been placeable or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and edit the build piece itself. So let's go to the building base base. So on our building P space, we have this is valid placement boolean and the set preview material as well, which changes and updates that value. What we're going to do here is we are going to create a function called check valid uh, placement. And that's going to have a return node. And that return node is going to have a boolean attached to it. So let's just do that. It's valid. And we'll make it tick button by default there. Okay, so that's all we're going to do here. Um, what we need to do is go back to event graph now, go on to a tick event, because we want it to constantly look and update for its position. So on event tick here, we're going to drag out our is uh, previewing. And then from here, branch. And from the branch, if it's true, we want it to be check the valid placement all the time. And on check valid placement, this is valid is going to come out and set the preview material based upon that. So it'll go red or green. Hit compile and save that. So as we said, we left this one blank purposely in the building piece space. That's because we want to be able to determine and override this function per object. So let's close that and go into our fire pit. So for every building piece, we have to go to our functions, override, and check for valid placement. In here is where we work out whether or not the placement is valid. So in this case, we will know whether or not this thing is touching the floor. So we can do a simple line trace down from its position. So line trace. And its current location is the start. And the end location is the start plus, or rather negative. Let's do negative. Negative. And a Z here will do um, 50. Or 100, we'll do 100 because that's what we've done grid wise. And then to end. And if this is a blocking here, that means there's a floor beneath it. So we're going to drag that out and plug that into the is valid and bring it in there. So now we've overridden our fire pit. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in action. I'm going to go in and push plate, go get our items that we need. Get our tree. Okay. And go to build menu, fire pit. Okay, so here it's gone green. But if I aim up, you'll see it goes red. And that's because it can't sit on that in the air. But we have got a slight issue here where it is technically hitting the floor so i just want to change that 100 that we put in and change the value of that because here i want to be valid this doesn't need to be valid yeah and we also need to check that this is also a valid location as well because you can see it's flicking between the two okay and way we could do that is looking at the normal off the surface so let's go ahead and take a look at that in our fire pit so first things first, let's change the minus here to minus 50. So now we've got our set to negative 50. The next thing we'll do is do a box trace alongside our line trace. The line trace is finally on the floor. The box trace is going to handle the area. So let's do box trace, 
by a channel. And the start location and end location it could be the same as our act location. So I'm going to put that into start and end. So it's not going to go anywhere, it's just going to stay the same thing. But the half size would be the extent of our mesh. So we take out our mesh component. And we're going to get the component bounds of that mesh. And in here you want to put the box extent into half size there. And uh, you probably could have also put the origin into both these two as well, but they'll do fine. Orientation, we can leave at 0, 0, 0. Trace channel set to visibility. And we're going to put that into our line here. But the is valid now is when line trace is true and box trace is not true. So we're going to drag this in and do not boolean. And then do an and boolean. That's these two Booleans put together into here. Now I'm going to draw a debug for my box so you can see what it's doing for one frame. And let's take a look at that in action. And we'll go up here. Like that. And I'm going to go to build a fire pit. Okay. So as you can see now, that box collision is there. Okay, which is great, but you can see because of the way the model is, it's slightly off centered. So I don't want this to be the case of clipping the floor like it is right now. I want it to be up a little bit. So let's go back to our fire pit and just raise it up a little bit. So actor location, add on here the height of it, which would be, I don't know, let's do 50. And that'd be the start and end point. Again, they're the same. Like that. Okay, let's try that again. Build fire pit. And now you, you can see the box is red, which means there's no collision happening until I pop it in next to other objects. Then he won't let me do it. So then all we've got to do is place it. So let's go to our player controller. And on our player controller, we're going to do the, uh, we'll do left mouse button. There's a little debug. And on here, we can drag out a pivot piece, convert the validate get. And if it is valid, we're going to place it. So on build piece here, place object. And you only do that if it's valid because we've got that on the on the actual object itself and if it is valid we then want to clear the build piece by setting it to nothing if it's not valid then nothing's going to happen and if place object doesn't happen uh, we need to not say one thing i forgot to do on place object we need to know whether or not it's successful or not if it wasn't successful then we don't want to build piece again so we can take the build piece here and do is uh is uh, what we're doing is previewing. There you go. Get it previewing. And if it's no longer previewing, so previewing is false, clear the build piece. There we go. So let's now put that in game and have a look. Oh, whoops. Because I put the left mouse button in there, uh, it's being consumed. I'm just going to put this and tick off consume input just so we can test it out. There we go. Uh, that'll do. And go to build, fire pit. So now I can move it around. And if I click, we can place it. Perfect. And there you have it. We can now place objects from our build menu using resources that we've collected. And that's basically the crux of the survival series. Uh, all that's left in that part is to worry about is the actual just making the content. But we're not going to stop there. We'll do a few more examples. Plus, we'll go through how to do the new hunger and drinking system, which we'll go over in the next episode. You can watch the next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. And if you want to support the channel, you get access to all of our videos before everyone else, as well as many other benefits too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.